So, hello, hello. Um, today is all about science, and I can tell you science is pretty crazy. Either science is really good, or they have some really um, interesting discoveries. And I was reading the newspaper today, and I found two. One of them I thought was hilarious and kind of a waste of time. The other I thought was fantastic, and I cannot wait to be able to use it in the future. So the first one came uh, from the Seattle Times, and this is all about belching cows, burping cows, and how they affect uh, the way we live. And so some scientists in Tokyo did a study on belching cows and found that um, cows that burp make up for 5% of the um, gases that contribute to the greenhouse effect. I didn't know that. I didn't know cows were such a big deal when it came to global warming, but it looks like that they are. And what happens, they say, is when the cow chews its cud, uh, they burp. And um, the burping uh, says it releases methane. And um, and supplementing the animal's diet, supplementing the animal's diet, the cow's diet, it says, with cysteine, which is a type of amino acid, and nitrate can reduce the methane produced by cows when they burp, according to researches, researchers. And now they're um, you know, talking about how certain um, fertilizers uh, that farmers use when they, um, you know, fertilize their crops or whatever can contribute to more belching. So the more fertilizer they eat, the more they belch. So that's one way that they're saying to reduce the belching is no more fertilizer. The second one is uh, giving these animals um, cysteine. And they talk about how a great idea it is and how you know this is going to really significantly cut um, the, uh, the gases that produce global warming. And then it says um, that the amount of cysteine a cow needs each day costs 95 cents. So if you have an entire herd of cows, you're going to pay a dollar, pretty much, you know, with taxes and everything, a dollar a day for each cow. And that can add up to a ton of money. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't know of too many farmers, whether they're livestock farmers, or wheat farmers or corn farmers that have that much money um, left over uh, to use to stop the cows from burping. Um, but I don't know that much about farming nor cow raising, so correct me if I'm wrong on that. Maybe they have a ton of money left over, but I don't think so. Uh, there's one other thing in here that was interesting. Ah! Um, the cysteine does not affect the taste of milk. That's good, because I don't know what I would do if people were feeding their cow cysteine and my milk tasted weird. Um, but anyway, so that was one study. Another study that I read about in the Seattle Times, again, um, I'm sorry, it was the New York Times, not Seattle Times, the New York Times, were bionic contact lenses. And a university here in the United States, I don't remember which one, it wasn't one of the you know major ones. It wasn't um, you know Harvard or Yale or anything like that. Uh, I just don't remember uh, which one it was. But they have developed a contact, and right now they're testing them on mice. I'm not crazy about animal testing, but they say it doesn't affect the the mice at all. And they are contacts that we will be able to wear here in the near future. They said. Um, that will actually not only um, help correct vision more, but so that we can literally, from what I understand, be almost like bionic people. Remember how, like on the Terminator and on the Bionic Woman, how they, their vision well it has those grids, and you know they can pinpoint exactly what they're looking for. So they won't necessarily be grids, but um, you will be able to see the internet. You'll be able to look at uh, your daily schedule. I don't know exactly how you can get that. You know, um, you can choose what you're going to look at. I didn't. It didn't explain that. But it talks a lot about light waves and how they can 
actually, you know, put wires and I don't know, wires in my eye, not such a crazy, not such a good idea, but um, wires and microchips embedded in the contact to where they will produce an image and then the light that we see will refract that image and somehow reflect the image that these microchips, wires, etc. produce in front of us. Now one of the uh, researchers, one of the people who wasn't so keen on the idea, talked about how in order for us to see really well, uh, the image needs to appear to be projected like 20 centimeters and how these contacts would never work. Well, the developers of these contacts said that by reflecting, by uh, manipulating the light, uh, then yes, these images will be very much readable and how, you know, hands off, uh, hands off like, you know, how we have the cell phone and we don't have to type and a lot of people, you know, have their PDA and their bucker and they're typing when they're driving. That won't be an issue anymore. They'll just be able to talk, speak, I don't know, press a button by their lap, um, but these projections will be able to be seen and they'll be, oh, um, you'll be able to see through them. Similar to what they said, uh, like how some cars have the image projected on the windshield and the image will show their speed or their temperature, something similar to that. Back to the mice. So they said that they've tried these contacts in mice and the mice have been able to wear them for 20 minutes without any sort of uh, repercussions at all. And now they're trying to get the FDA to approve these so that they can, well not approve them, but they are trying to get FDA, some group, to approve these for human um, experiment. So I think that would be very exciting. If not, I could not only see very clearly with my contacts, but I could also do other things. Though, at work, I, you know, you look like you're working, but you're really on the internet from your contacts. That might be weird. I don't know exactly how you can control that, but so it is. So, those are the two things I read today that I thought were very interesting. And, um, yep, that's it. So, I hope you had a good one. Bye.